Hello humans, Dr. Kai here. In this introductory video, I want to answer the question, what is a star? I'm not going to go into any of the detail of the science of stars in this video, but that doesn't mean science enthusiasts should switch off, because my goal in this video is to provide maybe a different way of thinking about them, and a framework for the rest of the series. Stars truly are tremendous, powerful, awesome objects. We can glean a lot of information about stars from our nearest star, the Sun. Just to get a sense of how truly incredible they are, I often like to think of them like this. Have you ever been to a bonfire? You'll know that you cannot really approach the fire. If you try to get too close, you will feel the heat on your skin. It will start to burn if you get any closer. It's a very memorable experience when going to a bonfire. On a hot day when the sun is high in the sky, for example when you're sitting inside a car and the sun is shining through the windows, you will feel that very same feeling on your skin coming from the sun. However, while the bonfire is only maybe 5 or 10 meters away before you get that feeling, the sun is 90 million miles away. That is such a vast, vast distance. It's an endless, bottomless pit. Travelling at this speed, the speed of light, and notice how quickly the Earth whooshes by. If we were to now aim at the Sun, and carry on at this speed, it will take 8 minutes to get to the Sun. That really truly gives you a sense of how hot, burning hot the Sun is. But okay, okay, let's pause for a second and let's go back. What is the Sun? What is a star? To truly answer that question in a satisfactory way, Let's figure out what conceptual family the Sun belongs to and where it is in that family. Leaving out advanced details, the universe, the visible universe, the stuff that we see and interact with, is primarily composed of protons, neutrons and electrons. In fact, by mass, the majority of it is made up of protons. So you can think of everything in the universe as various clumpings of protons. Individual protons are just the nuclei of hydrogen atoms, when they get together with neutrons, they form other elements. And now we need to start thinking of them in terms of how many we have in one place. As we get bigger, we can start thinking in terms of dust particles, then pebbles, stones, fragments, rocks, boulders. At some point, we get to the size of asteroids, comets. As you add more and more stuff, eventually you'll get things like dwarf planets and moons. Already we're talking about ridiculous numbers here, we're talking thousands of billions of billions of kilograms. When you've got this much matter like this, things start to change on the inside. It gets so heavy and it gets so crushing, it generates heat, but it's still able to keep a solid crust on the outside that you can walk on. If you keep on adding stuff, you get full-blown planets like Earth. We're talking a trillion trillion kilograms at this point. And you can keep on adding mass, but eventually, things are going to start to have to change. You get too much mass and too much gravity, and it gets too heavy. You'll always end up getting the gas giant at this point. Keep on adding more stuff though. Why should we stop? There's so much of it in the universe. Eventually these gas giants start to heat up. They get hotter and hotter and hotter. And they start forming what's called dwarf stars, that are not considered part of the main sequence of stars and do not have any fusion going on inside them. And as you continue to add more stuff, Eventually they get so big and heavy that nuclear fusion kicks off inside their cores. And now we're finally on the main sequence of stars and we've answered the question, what is a star and what family does it belong to? It belongs to the family of clumps of matter. Adding more and more of it in unfathomable quantities follows the same chain every time. And at the top of it rests stars. And we're talking a gargantuan amount of mass. Consider the fact that in our solar system, 99.9% .9 of all the mass, that's all the planets, all the stars, all the asteroids, all the dust, 99.9% .9 of it is in the sun. The very smallest stars on the main sequence have 10,000 trillion trillion kilograms of matter inside them. Protons, neutrons, electrons. We're talking about objects so extreme. Taking the entire Earth and throwing it into the sun would be like throwing a pebble into a pond. It's so bright, you cannot look at it for fear of going blind. They're so heavy that in the centre the protons get squeezed to the point so that there's the equivalent of exploding billions of bombs equal to the ones that were dropped on Hiroshima every single second. And what happens if you keep on adding mass to these stars? Stars like our sun are considered tiny compared to how big they can get. 
The largest star that we know of is over 250 times more massive than our star, and if it was placed next to our sun, it would outshine it by the same factor that our sun outshines the moon. And the universe is filled with them. So going forward, thinking of stars as these tremendous objects, these kings of the family of how to put together matter. Let's go into the details of these amazing objects, come to try and comprehend them, learn about their secrets, things that are not commonly taught that I promise will blow your mind. Things you never would have even dreamed of when you first looked up at the stars as a kid and wondered what they are. So long humans. <laughs>